There's a small electric motor company in Britain called Yasser, and Mercedes-Benz quietly bought them out a couple of years ago. It turns out that might have been one of the smartest things that Mercedes has ever done, because these people are building the most powerful electric motor in the world, and they're tiny. It's kind of been around the electric vehicle news uh, world for a little while now. Yasser has just broken its own world record for power density per kilogram. It's an amazing thing. So their latest motor produces 59 kilowatts, or around 80 horsepower, for every kilogram of motor weight. To put that into perspective, most petrol engines weigh two to 400 kilos and produce maybe one or two horsepower per kilo. Hello folks, Ben Alexander here. Thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate your time. So Yasser's new prototype weighs just 12.7 kilograms and puts out 750 kilowatts, or that's roughly about 1,000 horsepower. So that's not theoretical. They've actually done that now. They've been tested on dynos. And uh, not at the flywheel, not marketing hype, real measured output. So let's do the math. If you fitted four of these to a car, You'd have a quick car, obviously, but the uh, total motor weight would be about 51 kilos and the combined power output would be about 4,000 horsepower, which is... that's mad, isn't it? That's really absurd. The previous version of this motor weighed about 13 kilos and produced 550 kilowatts, around 740 horsepower. Even that set a record at 42 kilowatts per kilogram. Now they've pushed that up to 59, which is just incredible. So what's even more interesting is that these motors don't use exotic materials. There's no titanium or rare metals or anything. Uh, just clever, precise engineering. Yes, I say that uh, the key is their axial flux design, so the fact that it is like a, a sort of coin with a hole in it, basically that's what they mean by that, combined with advanced cooling, because obviously cooling is, is a big issue. They're going to have to really nail the cooling on these. That was the first thought I had when I read about these. It's basically a flat disc shaped uh, motor wheel where the magnetic flux runs sideways rather than uh, lengthways and that's what allows these uh, the size reduction and efficiency in these motors so they're estimating continuous power not peak as well so 350 to 400 kilowatts or roughly 470 to 540 horsepower continuous so that's what it can sustain not just short bursts or anything like that and the scale of this is huge for performance cars. Imagine what this means for your next, uh, you know, you're not your next sports car or a Porsche or something like that. Can you imagine if a Lotus, a little handmade little plastic Lotus from the 90s would have used these motors? That would have been super cool and uh, brutally quick, obviously. Four of these things would outperform basically the fastest internal combustion cars like Bugattis and uh, basically anything you could think of really. And uh, yet weighs less than a single cylinder head from a V8 which is mad, isn't it? Which, uh, so these motors are being built at Yasser's Innovation Centre in Oxford in the UK, and Mercedes-Benz now owns the company outright. Mercedes plans to use these uh, motors in its AMG EVs in the future going forward, and that is probably where we'll see the first uh, of them on the roads. This is not a concept car. This is not some sort of uh, model or a digital model or anything like that. This is a working prototype They've put it, they've done all the tests with it and they're ready for production. They say that it is going to be in cars and it is being manufactured and scaled up soon with a focus on high performance applications first. It's not just bragging rights that you'll get if you were to buy uh, a car with these motors, basically. This changes what is possible in EV design. Smaller, lighter motors means less unsprung weight, better efficiency and much easier packaging. Uh, and it's not unrealistic to imagine high performance EVs with motors in each wheel hub delivering torque independently, uh, something traditional engines can't even begin to match. So for reference, cars like the Koenigsegg uh, Regera or Ferrari SF90 Stradale, they already use the Yasser motors in hybrid form. So you, we've seen them, basically. Those cars were early adopters, but what's coming next will be pure electric and uh, much, much, much more powerful. So if you think about it, the uh, Bugatti Chiron, uh, you know, lots of horsepower, big heavy car, lots of cylinders, weighs two tons almost. A car using Yasser's electric motors, the next gen ones, could basically triple that power and cut the, you know, cut hundreds of kilos off of the drivetrain weight. So it's not, it's not close, is it really? It's not even close at all. So yeah, internal combustion 
is basically finished at this point, I would imagine, especially in the next three years when we start seeing better batteries come through with 20, 30, 40% more energy density. These tiny electric motors, now officially the most power dense motors in history, there's never been anything even a bit close to it. I think it's incredible that this breakthrough came out of a small UK company, pretty happy about that. And uh, that's, it started as well as a university project 16 years ago, in 2009. Tim Woolmer founded Yasser, he's probably now a rich guy by the way, while he was at uh, Oxford. He was studying at Oxford and now his design is shaping the future of Mercedes's performance division. So what do you think? Is this the next revolution for high performance EVs or is it overkill for the road? Let me know down below. I always love reading the comments and, and what you've got to say. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Ben Alexander. Really appreciate your time. Please also consider sub uh, subscribing to the channel. And these are the channel members and they pay to join on various tiers and that sort of stuff. I've also just added to the links below, uh, buy me a coffee. So you can buy me a coffee now if you want to. And the money does go on coffee, basically. It doesn't go on a yacht or anything. So not yet. Anyway, I'm just kidding. No, but um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Really appreciate your time. And uh, yeah. Very touched that so many people are watching, and I've now got, I think, 22-ish, I don't really check it that often, but 22,000 subscribers, that's amazing, so thank you very much.